because he would not let him go and fight in the war. Right. And uh, he finally acquiesced to that. And, of course, Mary just lost her mind because of it. And, uh, he, but he was attached to a general, and, you know, he was going to be pretty safe. He wasn't like he's out on the front line. Oh, right, yeah. Well, then he was the one that factored pretty heavily into the, the Spielberg movie. He had kind of a big part. That was that was a yeah, and he uh, yeah he did. You're right. I'd forgotten about I'd that. I rewatched that recently. I can't remember why. I think it was because I was just curious after one of your messages. You know, I have to research these. You know, things that whole heavily. family line has they're gone. What do you mean? No, no descendants of Lincoln. Isn't that right? I think I read that not long ago. There are no descendants of Abraham Lincoln left. This is why we brought you here. You need to be our permanent uh, historical consultant. Yeah. Julie McGuffey's in the yeah. audience today. But no direct from that line, no, no, wow. no left, which is kind of sad. That is sad. But I've got 11 grand boys. I know. You're, there's, no, there's no danger of the Brunson line. <laughs> Uh, I've got 11 times. grand boys. Are we on now? You have extreme. Ready to if you guys are ready. Yeah. Oh, we, we're. All, can you not? This. Can you not hear the gold? That's that's that's. <laughs> the banter. We're extremely ready. The last undefeated, this is. The last one died in 1985. That? That's wild. No, sir. This the micro. We'll just project. The microphones are simply for for online. The microphones are just so that our people can at home. Can y'all hear? Man, I can raise the volume now. Oh boy. Okay. okay. I'll have to. That, that, yeah, you're not the you're not the first one to tell me that. He's so, so self. I'll have to. Yes. I'll have to. I'll have to. I'll speak up. I'll do the Bob Bullis voice. This is this is what my father how my father speaks. When he's when he's very very serious about things, mm. Dad, if you're tuning, in, you know my dad's doing daily devotionals too. Did oh, I tell good. you that? No, I'm probably when I go up there for Christmas, and Lord willing, oh please let me go up there for Christmas. they will probably do one do one with him. Well, you go like, into Maryland, you'll have to quarantine for two weeks. You know, I check the updates like every day to see like are they making people quarantine and that sort of thing. Maryland's not doing it. Yeah, are they not? It's it's advised, but they're not requiring it. So uh, anyway. We'll see how all that develops, but we pr just praying every day. Lord, please, no, no exposure, that sort of thing. You want to get home to Mama. Well, this is a different day, uh, Pastor, because we have a live studio audience. We do with us today. This is at least different. they look alive. I <laughs> think they, are. <laughs> they look. They great. appear to be. No, they, they give signs of life. They don't know yet that this was just the plan that we hatched to 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 just see all the people that actually yeah. listen to this. The, yeah, these week. are the three people. That <laughs> <laughs> no, we just want to thank the both of you for being in attendance today. It just y'all make it all worth it. I'm sad that there's no one watching online because you're all live here now. And, and this isn't the Oprah show. We aren't giving cars away. There's here, none. So. There's yeah. I mean, there is coffee back there. Yeah. Um, you have to pay for some of it. I got the free one, but I, I put did it. Too. I, put, I put it in the expensive cup. I did too. I did too. And yeah. they'll fuss at us for using these. Well, so sorry to Sherry Dunn. But hey, uh, is she here? No, she's probably back dead. there processing all the money that we're wasting right yeah, now. That's she's right. not even. She's not even here. But this is this is good. It's really it's the Christmas season. We had to do something special like this. Yeah, and this is the cafe. It's morphing into a really yeah. neat place. When does the Christmas season start for your family? I was thinking. Oh, did you have something else? I was going to ask. When are we going to get the name for this thing? The cafe. We, we do. It's just not been unveiled yet. It's well, don't give it away. Cafe. It's the oh, cafe. Oh, it's the cafe. <laughs> it's the cafe. I we call it Holy Grounds. Yeah. We're on holy grounds in here, so. Hebrews is my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. Hebrew is that your favorite. That one did. Yeah, it is. I actually have some heat. Once we get to the sermon discussion, oh, no. I went into the interlinear. Well, so, yeah. Oh, my I can see I can see our studio audience salivating as I they can, think about yeah. it. And I'm getting dizzy already. Miss Debbie's coming in. I was just asking him about when the Christmas season starts in the Brunson household. Are you guys post-Thanksgiving? Are you pre-Thanksgiving? Well, <laughs> the, <laughs> the this, year, this year. <laughs> yeah. That's right. She's yeah. already started prep for 2021. That's, That's the thing that just Aussie, all this stuff she puts up, she and her decorator friend, I have to take it down. That's, oh, is that right? That's the thing. You I didn't just watch it and I 
I know it's coming. I can't enjoy Christmas because that's all I can think about. <laughs> she's giving him she's the back, cutoff she's time. She's giving me the stink this eye is, back wow, there. This is, this is, <laughs> this is, <laughs> normally people don't come in and tell us when I mention her dogs stop. in a sermon. Oh my goodness. We, uh, I, I always get, I always kind of roll my eyes when people are like, I cannot listen to Christmas music. Before Thanksgiving. That's usually the voice that they use when they say that. I can't listen to Christmas music before Thanksgiving. And me, like, as someone, like, I have to prepare the Christmas music. Like, I'm listening. I don't, I don't think we ever stop listening, really. Joanna's shaking her head because she hears me listening to, like, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer in February. Oh, and usually that's on the initial list and that gets cut off. We can't use that during Advent. <laughs> Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. I wonder if there's it. anybody's grandmother that actually ever got run over by a rain. I certainly hope not. That song would be exceedingly disrespectful if so. Just that's just a thought. I just wonder. Well, you can We've got say people you don't still believe coming in. Santa. Hey, and oh, they've got Krispy Kreme donuts. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Is that is that for us? I feel so sorry wow, for all of it. Thank, thank you. you. Now see, I'm on I'm on Steve, We've got an Steve audience. Baxley, future trustee at Valleydale yeah. Baptist Church. We've got an thank audience you, here. And uh <laughs> With an audience, wow! Oh, I've stars. even got the cream filled. I feel sorry for. That. I can eat one, and my wife can't say anything because there are people watching. I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to Margie Eubanks because she only listens to the audio of this, and she can't see the beauty of these donuts right yeah. now. That's incredible. Well, we'll all eat. This Thank you, brother. At the, Thank you. And by we'll all, I mean you and me. The rest of the people can't have any of these. Yeah. I'll split one. For all of y'all, and I'll take them. <laughs> That's like the cartoon where, he, where when he, like, they're hot, the... you can eat four of those things, and you don't know. Yeah, without taking a breath. Yeah, don't you don't you have don't a even cl- come gosh, up Did air. I eat that many? Yeah. Well, they're gone. They just melt so quickly in your mouth. They are. They are so good. They'll go great with this Joffrey's coffee. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't say that without doing your Scottish accent, Joffrey's thing. Joffrey. Do you think we should talk about yesterday at all? Maybe we should get to the Bible. We brought the choir. That's always no, a good thing. We today. brought the choir back, though. They were Did great yesterday. That? We were we popped in at a couple of Christmas parties last night, and that's what everybody was talking about. Oh, good. So it made an great, impression. Yeah, they they thought the music was great. I told them I, I, t- I said, listen, I worked with the choir. <laughs> One time I worked with the choir, and they come out, they sound that <laughs> fantastic. I, but I can't do that every week. Yeah, no, no, you, you're a very busy man. You, you did, you did a, you did an incredible job on a beautiful song that has to be one of the most difficult songs to sing. It's, yeah, it's a belter. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, a difficult it's song, simple. but it, you did a great job with it. Pastor came in. What, I can't remember what time it was. It was like 7:40 yesterday. We were just everyone was still kind of rubbing the sleep out of our eyes. We were trying to get going. And we end, we're practicing, we end it, you know, of course, there's nobody in there, so it's just silence, and pastor's like, use more breath. No, no, no. Use I said more mo- breath I with said the singing. More, I said more cowbell. More cow- <laughs> it wasn't more breath, it was more cowbell. More cowbell. There was hmm. no cow. Is it, well, That's Joseph, I, get on that. We I'm need saying. more cowbell, cowbell on the... Okay. He's right. He's furiously writing that down, I can tell. No more, okay, no more cowbell. Well, speaking of more cowbell, right. let's get to the Isaiah. word of God. Isaiah. Chapter this, 9. So you're doing three Christmas messages this year. Yes. Um, you started, started yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Christ as the light, talking about Isaiah. I thought that, that was great the way it synced up because I quoted that piece of Isaiah 9-6. And then that's, that's exactly And I know people think went. we plan that stuff, but we don't. Even though we do have planning meetings, or unless you do, you don't say anything to me about it. You just do it. Well, see, here's the thing. Here, I'm, the, I'm the son. Did you plan that that way, for real? No. No. I mean, I planned to say it, yeah. but I didn't. So, you didn't plan to do it because I was preaching out of Isaiah 9. Most of the ways that we line up are, there's, I can't believe we're actually revealing this today. Most of the ways that you and me line up on Sunday are because. God. Well, that, that is definitely number one. But yeah. I think some of it is because you're a Baptist preacher. I'm the son of a Baptist preacher, mm-hmm. and I know that so much of it is just... son of a preacher, man. I, yes, yes. Let's don't go there. No, please no. The, it, it was the only, like, I just know <laughs> I just know that so much comes together late 
So we have our planning meetings on Tuesday. Yep. And then sometimes I'll text you on like Friday or Saturday. Like, yep. hey, did you add this? Is this okay? That sort of thing. Well, yeah. I'm going to preach out of Galatians, I think, chapter 3 on the curse. Now, I'm waiting to see what kind of song you're going to use with that. Hey, wow. well, so far as the curse. Yeah, we have, yeah, we are doing joy to the world. A God again. Wow. What I don't know say? how y'all just sit there. Far as the curse is found. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. He comes to make his blessings known far as the curse is found. Well, that's exactly what Paul's talking about in chapter three. He well, starts we'll three like arguments that. in chapter three. It, it runs into chapter four, but he starts three arguments there on justification. Um, so if you're I'm looking at Galatians chapter three and into chapter four, he begins to discuss and he gives three different arguments or apologies of justification. Are those going to be your three points? No, think? I'm just going to deal with the first one. You okay. can't deal with three of those in one sermon. No, young grasshopper. Yeah, can you do that in 15 minutes? <laughs> Could you preach the book of Exodus in the next 15 no, minutes? No, we're pastors can't so even that's, that's say, that. say their name in 15 minutes most yeah, of the time. Really. You need more time than that. I do. Well, so, well, I'm... All right, I'll study Galatians a little bit. You know, I'm already studying First Peter. I'm trying to work on that. I'm trying to get well, ahead of you as I, I can for I January. Am too. Aliens. Oh, I certainly hope that you are aliens. Aliens. Do you guys think that we should do that for the sermon for the sermon series title next year, Miss Debbie? What do you think of that? Aliens. No. Should we just call it aliens? <laughs> she said, "Give that's it more good, thought." That's a good. That's a lawyer response, right just, there. Yes, just keep just keep working on it. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who reside as aliens. The elect exiles in the di diaspora, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the dispersion. Yeah. The maybe diaspora. We'll that'll be, okay. Well, look at us getting in the languages. We haven't even talked, so we talked about January's messages. We just talked about next week's message, mm -hmm. Galatians, the three arguments for justification in Galatians chapter 3. I'm going to remember to study that a little bit. Then you're bouncing around in the early chapters of Isaiah yesterday. Yep. Christ as the light. Your three points were uh, God's Messiah illuminates the darkest of situations, yep. illuminates the darkest of hearts, hearts, and then illuminates the darkest of places. places. Here's an interesting thing. I didn't say this yesterday. That's why we're here. Um, if you go back to Isaiah 6, which everybody knows right. because that's where... Isaiah enters the temple. He said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. Uh, you look at chapter 6, and you've got this incredible picture of Almighty God, whose glory is just filling the place. Yes. Come to chapter 7, you got the contrast now of the king of Judah. Hey, you go from this unbelievable, oh, right, right. majestic picture of God, and then you come, and Isaiah's there. Isaiah's there in chapter 7, but the contrast is too great not to be on purpose. The Holy Spirit purposefully, I think, gave these two events like this to Isaiah to write to contrast God as king and then Judah's king, Ahaz, right. who was about as ungodly as you could get. Yeah, you pointed us to 2 Chronicles 28. I went back this morning and, and read that, that whole chapter, just seeing, like, I, I, he was just not a good guy. I mean, most, most of his... No, and the interesting thing is he, he ends up with a kid who really turns out great. Hezekiah. Hezekiah. Yeah. yeah. And that's another contrast, because I went I read about Hezekiah, and he did do what was good in the... And he, he did. And he undid so much. He was not perfect, but, yeah, he was a very great king yeah, of Israel. So, yeah, how did A? I mean, obviously, that's just the Lord's grace because Ahaz was all over the place and, like you were saying, kind of made a deal with the devil and then got invaded and all yep. this sort of. I mean, yep. it's just horrible. There's really no It end. is. It is. But the whole thing, if you're going to grasp, really, chapter 9 uh, and the first couple of verses there, you've got to understand he's talking about darkness. You've got to get back and find out what's the background of this thing. So, the whole thing just kind of gets set up between this magnificent picture of God in chapter 6, and then in chapter 7, you come to Ahaz, who literally is, like you said, is going to make a, dev, uh, make a deal with the devil. And you see him here, and he won't trust God. Right, right. Well, it's, Isaiah trusts him in chapter 6. Ahaz won't trust him in chapter 7. Well, he doesn't. I mean, he puts him on the level 
of other pagan gods. He says, well, these gods clearly helped Assyria. These yeah. guys clearly... So I'll just go to them. And I'm like, how, how is it... It was how pluralism. Is it possi- how is it possible that he's forgotten the greatness of the God of, yep. of Israel yep. and Judah? It's, uh, it's, it's just unconscionable to me. But how quick are we to forget? I guess that would be a lesson that's the, for us. Now, that's the principle you draw out of it. That's good, Kirkwood. I'll make a preacher out of you yet. I don't know. <laughs> It's good to know that I'm uh, that I'm sometimes useful. One thing that I, that was really interesting for for me is and and you you touched on it a little bit as it was at the end of at the end of chapter eight in verse twenty two because this was and this this gets a little bit into your your second point but the point the the point that you're making with regards to that verse is that the he uses three different words for darkness, just yeah, to emphasize well, in, how bad it was. Yeah, into chapter 9, verse 1 and 2, he uses four words there for darkness. Oh, wow, okay. And then, it, but, but if you look, he sets it up in verse 22 of chapter 8, realizing Isaiah did not write this with chapter and verses. Of course, of so, course. So uh, later he innovation. Sets it, he sets that whole, this next paragraph up, up in chapter 8, verse 22, they will look to the earth and behold... Distress, darkness, gloom, anguish, and they'll be driven away into darkness. I mean, how you can't cram more words in there that give reference to darkness than that. Distress, darkness, gloom, anguish, darkness. Yeah, even it kind of bookends the whole thing, you know, with with this thing of darkness. He's making the point that apart from Emmanuel, apart from God's intervention, it, it is simply dark. Well, he's right? just talked about them turning to the occult, to mediums, to spiritists, um, you know, those who consult the dead, right? witchcraft, whatever you want to call it, all of that. And he, and he comes, he, in the end, this is what it is. It's distress, it's darkness, it's gloom, it's anguish, it's darkness. Well, and now, I, that sets up. Verse one of chapter nine. I like that when you were talking through that, you made that mention to to one of your um, well, it's beloved by me and another friend of the show, John Claxton. The the message that you did when Saul, King Saul, consults yeah. the dead, mm-hmm. and it's his descent into darkness. Yeah, well, he can't get a word from God. Uh, Samuel has died. You know, he has been so rebellious. God just doesn't speak to him. And so he couldn't get a word from God, so what does he do? Well, let's go to a witch. How, what kind of thinking is that? I mean, really? Well, God's not going to speak to me. Jesus isn't going to speak to me. Let me go get a witch out here somewhere. Well, well that's the same. That's the, that's the warped thinking of the pluralism of this world, is that the word of a witch is as good as the word of God. You have got to be kidding me. Well, br- bring that into the present, because, like, I, I don't think that, I mean, obviously, we'll, our hearts will sort of run from God. Well, the, the whole bumper sticker, coexist. You know, you see this, it's all these symbols from all these different religions, and in the middle of it, they've got a cross, as if to say that the word of Buddha, and the word of Christ, and the word of Krishna, and the word of Kali, or the word of, you know... Whoever is, are equal. Where do where do Christians end up going? With, in, in, like I can't get a word from God, so here's where I'm going to run. Like obviously, you're not going to see many people in the church run to like you know their their local. I don't know where do witches hang out. Their local coven, but like where are they like where are they going for a for a word if they can't find it immediately? Science. Oh, okay. I see where you're going with that. Hollywood. Right. Oprah. 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 Well, Oprah thinks Dr. she's Field. God. Right. Shirley MacLaine. You, <laughs> you love going to Shirley MacLaine. You know, I had yeah, to she look. She thinks she's God. Oh, really? Yeah. Like she's a cult leader or something like that? Well, she's her cult leader. Okay. Is yeah. she still alive? Yeah. Okay. We need to get her. I'm going to get our fact checker on that. I want to know more no, about Shirley MacLaine. I want to know more about Shirley MacLaine Im- immediately. Okay. Yeah. That. I think that's a good point. Actually, I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that. So... Like, they go everywhere. <clears throat> like what, what, what makes us descend into darkness, I think a lot of times is like not recognizing how much we're trusting other sources uh, as opposed to the Word of God, right? I mean, you even talked about that. This yeah, and I think we do that even in the church. 
Yeah, that's, that's specifically what I'm talking about. Yeah, I think we do that even in the church. What's the bottom line, the number, the finances, you know, that becomes more important than the gospel. Wow. You know, that kind of thing. I think other things, you know, I've, I've seen people get so territorial about a classroom. Um, you would think that the kingdom of God rested on the fact that we meet in this room. You know, all kind of, we do wacky stuff in the church. We really do. But the point is, every time we trust in those things more than we trust in God, it, it results in basically this descent into darkness. I think it's somewhat of a, of a, uh, a good luck charm. You know, good things happen when we meet in this room. here. I don't know that we actually consciously think these things, but we attach <laughs> certain things. If we do this the certain way, if we sing these certain songs, if we yeah. do these certain things, then things are going to, it's going to please God. As if God is a God to be appeased by stuff. I remember that was one of the things that um, local pastor Al Baker said. He did a conference. I think this was before you even got here, and he talked about like the, the joy and the beauty of revival. And then at the end, he talked about some of the dangers of revival is because um, after the Lord does a massive work at a specific time, in a specific place, people go back and they start assigning importance to the building where it happened and the songs they were singing yeah, when it happened, sure. as opposed to the work of the Lord. Yeah. yeah. How quick we are to do that. But the point that you were making in the text, and then you even, put, and then you even pulled in uh, John chapter 1, as I recall, that like no, even in the descent into darkness, the... Even though we're like, we, we might waver back and forth, the light himself, Emmanuel, Christ, is never pulled into darkness. I love that point you made from John chapter 1. Well, that's one. what John, in fact, if you look at John, you'd have a hard time convincing me that John wasn't thinking of Isaiah when he was under inspiration writing right. chapter 1. I thought that You've was fascinating. You've got these themes that are going on here through, through the whole of the Gospel of John. Light, darkness, life, death. Really, a lot of what Isaiah is talking well, about. Well, and light here. is the life. That was That's one right. thing that, that, that you yeah. mentioned as well. And I, I mean, I love that. I, obviously, under, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that part is important. But just thinking about what was in the mind of these men as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Because right. surely he understood that. Sure he did. What, what Isaiah had said yeah. about the coming king and all the ways that was fulfilled in Christ. Yeah. It's just beautiful to you think know, about. You know, when we talk about inspiration, it was not that these people were seized. You ever heard of automatic writing out of the occult where they would oh, sit down with yeah. a blank and they would fall under some kind of, sp and they would just start writing and supposedly, you know, this is what's coming out of the spirit world. That's not how the Holy Spirit moved on. The, he used these guys' minds, their their understanding, their background, their personality. You read yeah. John, John reads a lot different than Paul. You read, That's true. You read Peter, he reads a lot different than Paul and John. They're different people. You know, so the Holy Spirit used their personality. Same thing with Isaiah, you know. Maybe we need like a Wednesday night series on like the canon of Scripture and how it came to be and that sort of thing. Well, Just can, add, add that to do, your list. We can do that, sure. We'll make it on Thursday night. Then you can preach like four yeah. four messages a week. Well, between one and four in the morning, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> any, you know, any, why not then? <laughs> just laying around. Just lay. You're just laying around with your eyes closed. Yeah. Wow. You're wasting so much time there. That's funny. Um, I wanted to. So this. I'm going to jump sort of to to the end because I don't want us to to run out of time. But I I love the point that you made because you were talking about. Isaiah mentions those tribes specifically mm -hmm. about to whom the Messiah is coming. And right. it's Naph Naphtali, and the other one is... Zebulun. Thank, thank you. And, um, and the, the, I, this, is, this is where I'm so grateful for, for your study and your leadership here, because I'd read that and like, okay, well, why is it those two tribes? In fact, I have read it before and wondered that. Like, why mention these? And I'd love for you to take us back through, like, why, why that was important. When you get to the northern part of Israel, you're, you're, it, it was the area that the Canaanites occupied as Israel came into the I've land. I've got to go to Israel with you at you some do. point. You need to. Let's go. Right, um, right now. I'd get on a plane and go right now if I could. But up there in that northern part, they were detached. They were off. They were away. 
they were see, they were it's the mountains up that way although they're mountains down in you know Jerusalem's what 2800 feet above sea level it's a it's a mountain down there but they were just kind of seen as bucolic country you said hillbilly, hayseed hayseed wow you know kind of kind of looked deal. down upon yeah but it was the area through which all of the 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 trade routes would come first and as they would do that, coming out of the East, they'd bring in all of this paganism. They'd bring in all of this dark mysticism. Hmm. Bring in all of this kind of stuff. Interesting. So they'd bring that in, and that's kind of the darkness they were in. That's the way the Babylonians would come. The Assyrians would come. The Romans would come. The Parthians would come through that area. So they were always under the darkness of whatever was invading the rest of the country. And Isaiah calls them out specifically. Yeah, and he looks to, you know, to them specifically. Where is the least amount of light in Israel? Hmm. Well, the further you get away from the temple, the further you get away from Jerusalem, you're going to get, a, you know, it's going to become darker and darker sure, and darker. Sure, sure. And so they were the furthest away. You could say that the tribe of Dan, but Dan moved itself. They couldn't, and we don't have time to go there. But anyway, Wish we did. That's, what it, that's the implication of that right there. Right. And so Jesus called, uh, called his home, uh, called Capernaum his home, which was in. Yeah, when you get to Mark chapter 2, I love this. When I take groups to, and we get to Capernaum, I always turn to Mark chapter 2, verse 1. And I love this statement. It just says so much that when he had come back to Capernaum several days after, afterwards, it was heard that he was at home. Isn't that a neat thing? It is neat. To think that Jesus had a place called home, you know, that he could go to. And it really turned out to be Peter's house. He stayed with Peter. So was that it? Did I was that in one of the one of the areas that you were that you were talking about there at the Yeah, end? it's in Naphtali. Okay, that's that's it's, in, it's in the Naphtali. It's I need to in the that. tribal area of Naphtali. Nazareth is in the tribal area of Zebulon. So the the point the point there is that not only is the light coming to the least of these, but literally the light when he's physically on earth, he calls that yeah. place his home. Yeah. Well, I love stuff Gal- like that. The Galilee of the Gentiles. That's the only place you're going to read that. Why would Isaiah say that? Now Isaiah was a blue blood. We believe Isaiah was related to the royal right, family. Right. Right. And uh, he was certainly a very educated man, brought up in. It, it appears to be in some affluence. Now, why would he be talking about, why would this um, great Hebrew prophet be talking about the Gentiles? Why would he call it Galilee of the Gentiles? Well, the Holy Spirit impressed him with that, and it's basically a way of saying this is who Messiah is coming to. Yes. He's not yes. just coming for the Jew. He's coming to the Gentile as well. I think that's that that was the key for me and obviously that's where that's where you ended is it's just that the gospel is for everyone the gospel should be shared with everyone. Yeah. I mean that's hopefully that's that's at least one of our takeaways every single week and especially in this Christmas season when yep. again we're tasked with being the light being the salt and the light mm-hmm. in our community. I I just pray that people are able to to uh to hear that. Now, is, are we going to let them ask questions? Are they going to ask you questions? Uh, I, I, you, know, you know me. I never give press conferences, so I don't okay. think that I'm going to be able to take any questions. But if you, want to play, if you guys want to play Stump the Pastor here at the end, that would be, that would be well, kind of funny. It's Stump the Minister of Worship over here. If you want to Stump the Minister, I'm much more easily stumpable. I didn't even know how to pronounce Naphtali. Well, thanks for coming, guys. We're sorry we don't have any time for well, I, to- <laughs> I told them yesterday to set their expectations low, and I think we delivered. Yeah, we did. So, we always can deliver on that. Yeah, as long as your expectations are low enough. Well, Joanna, what do we need to tell people about stuff coming up? I know it's our last One Family uh, um, series. This, this, yeah, this Wednesday and the next Wednesday is the Christmas the party. Cookies, carols, and cocoa. Mm-hmm. Let us know you're coming. Yes, also, it's, make sure you RSVP below the Christmas Eve service. So you can yeah, find. and we're nearly full on both of those. I understand. So are we really? Call, Don't you, you, I think. Uh, we have seventy spots for Christmas Eve and two hundred for the twenty-third. 
200 spots for the 23rd and 70 for Christmas Eve. Yeah. So if you want so to come on the 24th, you better get on that. And we'll be full, so get your get your calls in. That's right. That's right. We want to be able to accommodate everybody. I'm sorry the front row's taken up since Steve Baxley just gave us these uh, Krispy Kreme donuts, but you might be able to. Yeah. There are no assigned seats unless. Mm -hmm. I don't our, know what that. I our producer know, says, waiting. let's, ra let's oh, wrap let's it up. Oh, let's wrap? Our producer said, let's I'm wrap it up. I'm waiting for an explanation on the assigned seats. Uh, do, unless, unless bribery is involved, oh, obviously. Okay. Yeah. Obviously. Well, yeah, well, we're thankful again to all of our live studio audience, and we're thankful to all you guys watching at home. And we'll see you on Wednesday night online. Hopefully we'll see you, uh, well, or live. We'll see you live next week as well. Hopefully we hope we'll, we'll all, all be alive. We'll, hopefully we will all be alive. Are we going to do this weekly? No. We're probably not going to stay live like this. We'll probably keep this for some, spe we'll for do some it special live events. For, uh, on Tuesday mornings, but not with a... Not with the audience. I don't believe we could live under the pressure. That it's very difficult. The donuts are nice, but everything else has been very difficult. <laughs> we will. If you want to mail the donuts, uh, um, or just drop them off. Does anyone trust the, the postal the, service send anymore? The, send the donuts by truck. Yeah. Okay. This is actually and usually how things end. Anyway, it's just us continuing to talk, and then Brody eventually just cuts us off. So you guys grab another cup of coffee, and I'll, we can hang out for a minute. Thanks. Guys. Bye bye online. See Thank ya. Did anybody have a question about the text? I assume that may be why y'all showed up. <laughs>